And the current situation, the changed context, the changed setting, which Bahjad tried to stress and clarify, in these secular, secularized countries, like in Europe especially. Now here you have to organize yourself differently because the role played by the church for almost 2,000 years has changed. If, it, if the church likes it or not, the role has changed. The church can no longer be um, a caretaker of our people in all facets of their social life or even political life as they used to do or even play the role of uh, hospitals sometimes. Now, this is where the organizations come in. We fill a gap here and we complement the church. And for us, the Syriac Universal Alliance, because I said that the nation is like a mosaic of different Syriac or Aramaic churches, we are not limited to one group only. Okay, I'm, personally, I'm Syrian Orthodox, but we have in our ranks as well Syriac Catholics or Protestants or even Chaldeans and Maronites. And this is very important if we want to achieve something as a people. I already said that the Syriac Universal Alliance has a non-governmental organizational status at the United Nations, at the Economic and Social Council. And what this means is very simple. We can attend conferences, we can participate in conferences, in meetings, and we can submit oral and written statements as we have done before. And we talk about a lot of things, about, for example, effective participation of minorities, about minority rights, the rights of indigenous peoples. There's Shamiram Yusuf from North Shopping. She has also participated in one of those conferences in Geneva about indigenous peoples on behalf of the Syriac Universal Alliance, for example. The Syriac Universal Alliance is also active at the European Union or the Council of Europe. Yesterday, I received a resolution of the European Union, and I can tell you that two of our articles, which we sent to the EU and all members of the European Parliament on the 6th of January, two of them have been included in this resolution about Turkey, and this is a big step. We have also contributed to a resolution 1704 at the Council of Europe, which was, which was accepted last year, and it included two historical articles, historic articles, I should say, about our people. I can talk a lot more about this, but you, you feel now the distinction between the church, in what ways the church is operative, in what ways the church is serving our people, and in what ways we are doing work for our people. Mostly social, on the social, political, and cultural level, as you can see. Rahman, prosit. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the SUA. The SUA, as I said, has the NGO status, I received it in 1991. The only thing I need to say here is that of all those Christian communities I just mentioned, of all the Aramaic Christian communities, of all those Christian communities which speak the language of Jesus Christ, it's only the Syriac Universal Alliance which has this exceptional status. We have a key to enter the United Nations and talk and sit and meet with ambassadors, with ministers. I Every time when I go to Sweden, I give this example here, is in 2003, when I was a delegate to the United Nations in Geneva, it was shortly before the war in Iraq uh, broke out, I went to Anna Maria Lindt when, after she gave her speech at the Human Rights Council. I went to her, I introduced myself, and I said, uh, I'm, a, I'm what you call in Swedish Syrian. And she was very happy when she met me. And I gave her her... I gave her our written statement. Now, what I'm trying to tell is that we have easy access to the United Nations where we can really change things, where we can change the course of our people, where we can change the destiny of our people. And I always also make a call here, especially to the youth, that you should step forward and also become a part of this movement. Because if you stand at the sideline, you cannot change everything, anything. But if you enter, you will notice that slowly but surely things will change and can change. Now, what more has the Syriac Universal Alliance, together with all its member federations, done for our people before 2008? We have given the people as a gift the Endolda Perlan, as you would say in Swedish. It describes 3,000 years of Aramaic history, about Aramaic language so that the youth can, under, can read it and understand, understand itself. 
understand its position in the present so that it can make the right decisions to move to, towards the future. This project, by the way, is, con consists of three videos and now DVDs and three books, illustrated books. Now, the other project I already mentioned is called Suryoyasat. Again, an initiative which started in 1993. Imagine, in 1993, the first idea was launched. They said, we, as, if we are a people, we need a, a television of our own, just like all the other nations. Otherwise, we cannot talk about ourselves as a people. How can you talk about yourself as a people if you lack like, your own media, in modern, and, and, and you cannot follow up with um, modern technology, and you cannot keep up with it? Now, that's why we have established Suryoyasat, and also received the help of the Syriac Orthodox Church from Sweden only. But outside of Sweden, all over the world, is the Syriac Federations, the Aramaic Federations who are pushing for Syria Isad. And I can tell you, soon we will also bring it to Australia and even to America, Syria Isad. I can tell you also that recently there, have been appointed, there has been appointed a new board and I can assure you that in the next month, maximum in two months, you will see change on TV. Many people have spoken about change, but I can promise you in one and a half to two months maximum, you can keep me at my word, you will see a noticeable change on Suryoisa. It will be professionalized a bit more. Now, main activities since 2008. Why, since, why do I keep mentioning this number 2008 this, this year? Because in October 2008, I've been elected as the president of the Zurich Universal Alliance, together with a few more friends. We are seven in the board. But I can tell you first very briefly about a few things which we have done behind the scenes. We have professionalized the organization and we are still in this process. We have injected it with new ideas. Uh, we have improved the administration, also the financial administration, and, as a re and especially given it in, uh, new intellectual ideas. One of the things that I can mention with much pride is Price Waterhouse Coopers. As you know, this is um, Price Waterhouse Coopers is a uh, accountancy firm, uh, and they have because they like our ideals. They have um, produced, with the help of our people, our financial committee, a financial or annual financial report, and it cost them f fifteen thousand euro. It's like almost one hundred fifty thousand kroner. And they did it without charging us uh, anything for this project. Why? Because they recognized themselves in our ideals. And by the way, I stand, if I say I, I mean the whole organization, I stand for transparency and profession professionalism. And when I talk about transparency, I also that, uh, add something to it. That's a deed. And our annual report can be found on the internet soon. So everybody can see like what's going on, who is the leadership of the SUA, um, what kind of financial trans transactions we have, where does our money come from. I will just mention briefly again three activities which we have done since 2008. Again, um, as said before, because we have this NGO status, we have access to the United Nations. And here you see, for example, a, a forum at the United Nations in Geneva, but we have also participated in Vienna and in New York City, and soon we will do that again. Now here, <laughs> thank you, I think it's, you should applaud for yourself that we as a people have such an organization yeah. that you can enter this organization and uh, also contribute something uh, to this organization and work for your people through this organization. Now. This woman left, on my left, is from the Department of Justice. She was the representative of the United States of America. She was a former student of Barack, President Barack Obama. And I've spoken to her like three days because I sat next to her and she has helped us later with contacts into Washington. Now this is the difference between uh, being operational in the religious field and being operational in the political field. Here we have direct access to key leaders, to key representatives, to really um, make them understand our problems, our issues, our needs. 
the Aramean question, as we say, and put our questions on the agenda. And we have actually spoken at this conference. And there were like 500 people, representatives from all over the world here at the United Nations. Now, this is a meeting we had with the Minister of Culture of Syria. This, this was in 2009, in the summer. We also met with the, in, in that same week with the Minister of Syria, uh, the Minister of Information of Syria, and with the highest religious authority, the Grand Mufti. But we have met with ministers in Turkey, with, uh, with members of parliaments all over the world, and we also meet and work together with other fellow NGOs. And we're also active at the 